Welcome back to Real Repairs for Real Customers. Back in 1994, something happened that changed everything. Let me explain. I was hosting a repair seminar in Cincinnati, Ohio, and I was teaching the single needle blind stitch, which many repair techs were using at the time. The single needle blind stitch, though, left a sawtooth look in the finished product. We had variations on that for stretchy cloth. We could drop back a little every time we crossed over. That way when the fabric stretched it would look nicer. Some would come back the other direction in order to half the size of the teeth in that stitch. But you could have already started using smaller intervals. While I'm teaching the single needle blind stitch, an older gentleman looks over my right shoulder and he says, you know, my dad used to use two needles. So I turned to him and I said, well, how did that work? He said, I have no idea, I don't remember, but I just know that he used two needles when he repaired the sails on his boat. So that got me to thinking. I immediately went home and figured out what he was talking about. I wish I remembered the gentleman's name because he really deserves the credit for this. I developed what's called now the double needle blind stitch. Why did that change everything? It changed everything because now I was able to do repairs that I couldn't do before. There were huge damages that I would have sent to the upholstery shop. Now I could take repairs that I considered prior to this impossible to do, and I all of a sudden made them the easiest repair to do and the repair with the least investment. That made a big change. It came along at just the right time for me because it was at a time when the dealers were having trouble finding the best cars to put on the used car lot, and some of the cars had severe damages. And you know the car business fluctuates like that from year to year. So right at this particular time, when it looked like half my work I wasn't able to do, now I could do it so I didn't have to suffer a lack of work. Another reason why the double needle blind stitch came along at the right time has to do with the change in materials in automobiles. Now we mentioned that you get a sawtooth look using the single needle. That was okay at the time because the velour seats were a really heavy, thick nap of velour. And that sawtooth look would get hidden down in the nap. Today we have much finer fabrics and sport cloth, so the stitch has to be much better. Also back in the day we found that a lot of the vinyl and leather seats would have a welt cord, or piping as it's commonly called and so the stitch could get hidden underneath the welt cord or piping. Well, there are fewer and fewer seats that use the welt cord anymore. Range Rover comes to mind, but there are fewer automobiles that have that, so the stitch is more exposed. It has to be a better stitch, and the double needle is in fact twice as good as the single needle stitch. It's just what we need at the time. It really did change everything. And since 1994, we've never been teaching the single needle blind stitch at any of the seminars. We've always been teaching the double needle blind stitch. I'm sure that uh, when you see how that works, you'll be just as enthusiastic and it will also change your repair world as well. So come on, let's go to work. Let's first of all analyze what kind of stitch we're talking about here. In the stitch adjacent to the one to be repaired, we see the center line, of course, is a blind stitch. On either side of that, where the selvage is folded underneath on either side, is a top stitch. And so we recognize this as a French stitch. So the French stitch could be thought of as a single blind stitch 
with two top stitches parallel. But in our repair area, we see only one top stitch. The salvage from both panels have been folded to one side, and so only one top stitch is needed. So in this panel, there are three layers. However, we'll be sewing just through the one top layer. The damage extends nearly the length of the panel, and we'd like to start a couple inches beyond the repair area anyway to gradually bring our stitch together. Our goal is to replace this top stitch with a very neat blind stitch. We'll be using hand sewing thread, and you can choose either a three or four inch round tip needle for cloth. Initially, grab about 3 eighths of an inch of material on one side. And the same thing on the other side. Now we insert the right needle into the same hole as the left thread is coming out of and travel 3 8 of an inch. Leave a little bit of a loop. The loop is so that we can grab and stretch the hole open and insert the needle in the same hole. So for each stitch the needles just swap sides and then they travel 3 8 of an inch. Take care to make sure that the needles exit the material directly across from one another. I like to do three or four stitches at the beginning without pulling them together. And you'll see that this gives me the opportunity to push the center material down out of the way. And the valley that's created will travel towards my starting point. Here I like to use my scissors to depress the excess material out of the way so that each stitch hole on the left matches up to each hole on the right, making it impossible to see the stitching. From this point, you can pull each stitch tight individually, or do maybe two stitches and then pull them tight. As we pull this one tight, we will be careful to push all the frayed edges down out of the way. 
depress any excess material out of the way so that the holes can meet up perfectly. When you're tightening, it's a good idea to alternate left and right a couple of times and that pulls out the slack in each of the threads. As you can see, as I get near the end, I am bringing my stitches closer to the center line.
At the very end, I'm basically tying a square knot. The first step, I wrap twice. This is the start of what's called a fisherman's knot. The object of wrapping it twice is so that when you pull it tight, it stays tight without having to put a finger on it. Pull it in line with the stitching. And then finish up with one wrap around as you would do with any square knot. If you insert the needle into one of the holes where you tied the knot originally, then you'll find that you can turn the knot under the surface of the fabric. Anyway, this is what we're going to attempt. It doesn't always happen, but uh, it's nice when it does. I bury the tails come out some distance away from the knot so that when I finish cutting the thread it's not cut too close to the knot itself. Just give it a good pull and the knot goes under. So I think that this is about as close to a sewing machine stitch as we can get by hand. The casual observer will not notice any difference.